Hey guys, it's me Sarah, the video editor here at Wholesale Ted. So you know, I think that everyone remembers that dramatic moment of how it feels when you make your first sale online. And the winner of her first ever sale is... Sarah Crisp! Wow, this is just this is just very unexpected. I, I'm feeling so emotional right now. I don't know what to say. Actually, that's not quite true. I have a very long speech prepared. I don't think I'm going to be winning that jet ski. Yep. There is actually no way to describe that rush, that euphoria that you feel. Making your first sale is awesome. But of course, some of you have yet to make your first sale. And there aren't words to describe how that feels. But because Wholesale Ted is a family-friendly place, I won't say what they are. So if you want to know why you or other people that you see set up a store, run traffic to it, but don't make any sales, this video is for you. I'm going to be asking you 15 hard questions about your store and your ads, and I want you to answer them honestly. The chances are for many of you, you'll be doing several of these things correctly and that is awesome but keep listening because the chances are if you're not making any sales you're not doing so good in other areas so see which things you're doing right and which things you can improve on got it cool let's jump straight into the video question one can your products be found in a mall if you could go to the mall right now and find the product that you were drop shipping, the chances are you shouldn't be selling it. Probably the worst offending niche for this is clothing. People start clothing drop shipping stores all the time, but here is the problem. Oftentimes people are selling clothing that they could buy practically anywhere else. So yes, if you're selling something that's super unique like this, then that is unique and original. But this white beanie? No. Yes, it is a nice white beanie, but it's still just a white beanie. Now this is bad for two reasons. As I explained in my video, do not drop ship these items. Selling common items does have low conversions. Why? Well, because there is no sense of urgency for them to purchase this item from you. Instead of waiting for your version to arrive two to four weeks later, they can go right now to the mall and buy something very similar. But there is an additional reason that I did not mention in that video, and that is perceived value. Perceived value is the price that a consumer could conceivably believe that an item is worth. So when they look at your white beanie, they think to themselves, huh, what does Hollister price their white beanies at? And now suddenly they have a point of reference as to what your white beanie should be priced at. See, the reason why in this industry we can take items that cost $2 and sell them for four times the price is because we're selling unique items that our prospective customers have never seen at their local Target. They love cats, they love coffee, and now they can get cat coffee spoons? They didn't even know that this item existed. So within reason, you now get to set the price. Question two, are your product ad images good enough? Take a good hard look at the product images that you are using in your ad, because you need to remember the most important part for conversions for your ad is the images. This is a great picture because it clearly shows what is unique and special about this mug, that it's got a violin for the handle. But this, this is actually not a very good product image. Why? Well, because you can't see what makes this mug cool, which is the fact that it stirs drinks for you. Now, yes, it may say self-stir mug on the image, but what you're asking the customer to do is to take the time to conceptualize what this means. <coughs> People are scrolling through their Facebook feeds at lightning speed. You need to make sure that you've got an amazing image that grabs their attention. Of course, this mug actually does quite well as a video ad. Why? Well, because a video shows what makes it unique and special. It shows drinks actually being mixed. So perhaps you're selling products that really should be advertised as videos instead. Or perhaps you're selling products that are simply not photogenic or camerogenic, period. And if you are, I recommend stop trying to sell them because it's not going to end well. Question three, are your product listing images good enough? Product images are the most important part of your ad and they are the most important part of your product listing. People do not underestimate the importance of images. It has been shown in multiple tests that product images are the number one conversion factor when it comes to selling products. So do take the time to track down good images of your product. 
It was actually Greg Mercer from Jungle Scout that taught me the importance of photos because while dropshippers often take this issue lightly, Amazon sellers do not. When Greg released his private label product, Jungle Sticks for Amazon, he made sure to have photos that clearly showed the product at multiple angles. And then he made sure to have a photo that showed the height of his bamboo sticks. This was to help overcome objections for people wondering if they were long enough. Plus he also made sure to include a photo of his product being used in real life context as this has been shown to help prospective customers visualize themselves using it. And once you get a customer to visualize themselves using it, that is when the credit cards start to come out. Question 4. Does your store have a custom color scheme? Here is what we are asking prospective customers to do. We're asking them to, even though they've never seen us before, even though they've never interacted with us before, to, after seeing our advertisement, go ahead and click on it. And then again, even though they didn't know us 10 minutes ago, to go ahead and buy the product that we're selling and to give us their money, to trust us with their money. That may seem like a big ask and that's because it is. Of course, every day, thousands of people are asking prospective customers they've never interacted with before to purchase from them. And every day, thousands of customers say yes. But it's still a big ask. So to help them say yes, we really need to try to use every opportunity that we can to build trust along the process. And one way that you can do that is by actually putting an effort to create a brand, a style that matches the niche that you are targeting. This is why in my video tutorial, how to create a Shopify AliExpress dropshipping store, I tell people that they should be selecting two colors to use throughout their store. This helps set your store apart. It makes people feel like they've landed on a real store, a real brand, not just a lazy website that's been set up to take their money. And of course, two colors is a starting point. If you would like to use even more to set your store apart, then that is great. Not sure what colors to use or what colors look good together? Then use tools like coolers to help you. Question five, does your store have a custom logo? Just like a custom color scheme, having a custom logo is an essential way to turn your store from a generic website set up to take people's money into a brand. You can make one for yourself, but I suggest that most people out there go to Fiverr and get them to create a simple logo for you for just $5 plus a 50 cent transaction fee. Question six, does your product appeal to a certain niche? Something that you always need to keep in mind when you're dropshipping a product in your store and advertising it on places like Facebook and Instagram is your goal is to get people to impulse buy. Say it again with me, people. Your goal is to get them to impulse buy. Yes, again, for everyone that emails in wondering why some people would buy from you despite the long shipping times. It's because they have purchased from you out of impulse. And when you purchase something out of impulse, you don't do it with price checking competitors. You don't go to Amazon and check what price they're selling it at with two day prime shipping. So how do you trigger these impulsive feelings in someone? Well, selling a unique item as we've already established is very important. But you also need to make sure that you are appealing to a niche that people really truly love because that way when they see the picture or the video of the product that you're advertising, it will trigger an emotional reaction in them. So these long coffee spoons, I mean, they're helpful and kind of original, don't get me wrong, but you're probably going to have a much easier time selling these cat coffee spoons. Why? Well, because there are a group of people out there that really truly love cats. There are fan clubs for cats. There aren't really fan clubs for people that like long utensils. Question seven, did you add scarcity to your products? So guys, tell me, what is it that we're trying to do with our product ads? Impulse buy. That's right. Good job, we want people to impulse buy. So we know that if we want to get people to impulse buy, that we need to pick products that are unique and that appeal to niches that people love, but there is something else we want to throw in there, and that is scarcity. It is the cherry on top. We want to discount our product and make the customer really truly believe that it is for a limited amount of time. And you need to make sure in your product ad and your product description that the customer really truly knows that it is limited. It could be that it expires after three days. It could be that it expires after stocks run out. Or it could be that you're giving away your product for free, but only for the next 100 people as long as you pay the shipping. Whatever your scarcity is, make sure that you include it. Question eight, have you added scarcity to every product that you are selling? If you did, mm. 
Listen, if every single product in your store is discounted at 50% off, then the customer quickly figures out that every item is not actually discounted at 50% off. And in addition, having items that are priced at their normal price increases the sense of urgency for the customer. By seeing other similar items priced at $20, then it makes them think that, wow, this $10 item could really be $20. I need to act now so that I can take advantage of this discount. And don't get me started on stores that have countdown timers on every single product page. Don't do it. Question nine, did you add 20 products to your store? Inside the Dropship Club, our premium video training series, I host a live Q&A session for our members every month. One of the questions that was asked in our March session was this, how can I make writing product descriptions faster? Now the short version of the answer that I gave her is that oftentimes product descriptions between products can be repurposed. But I did understand where she was coming from with this question because it can be quite time consuming when you create unique product descriptions for all of the things that you are selling. But it's worth it, don't skip this part. Would you trust a store that only has five products? Unless it's a brand that you know doesn't sell that many, the chances are you would not trust that store. It looks unprofessional. It makes it look like your store is almost unfinished. You will be hurting your conversions if you try and advertise to a store like this. So don't be lazy. Make sure that you add 20 products to your store. Question 10, did you add product descriptions for each of the products that you were selling? So if you've been listening now and you think to yourself, well, oh, what's Sarah talking about? It takes two seconds to write a product description. You should probably listen to this. I had a friend who came to me with a moderately successful dropshipping store. They were making $50 to $100 a day. It was a nice side hustle. But yes, it was a side hustle and he wanted to know how could he turn it into a primary hustle? Why was his traffic not converting better? So I took a look at the website and it was selling some super cool t-shirts. Definitely no generic white t-shirts here. But his product descriptions were literally a sentence that was two lines long and all it talked about were the fabric features. I mean literally two lines long. He didn't even include anything like secure checkout with MasterCard and Visa. Nothing. Now images are still the most important part of the product listing which was probably why he was still able to make sales despite this. But if you don't have a product description, then it's going to hurt your store's credibility and it's going to make it harder for customers to trust you. Now don't get me wrong, product descriptions don't have to be super long. If you're running paid traffic, then short, sweet product descriptions usually convert best. A nice product description length to aim for in this case are two short paragraphs that are perhaps two to three sentences long. And the product description should be using sales psychology techniques that sell the customer on the benefits of the product and not the features. After that, you can then list your lines like secure checkout with MasterCard and Visa, or this product is not available in retail stores, or then you can start listing the product features like the type of fabric used. And of course, if you are dropshipping from AliExpress, then you should make sure at the end of your product description that you include a shipping time disclaimer and that you bold it so that the customer doesn't have an excuse for not seeing it. Question 11, have you tested 20 products? I'm gonna show you a comment that I received recently and I'm gonna blur out the name of the person who sent it. Basically, they were upset for three reasons. One, they purchased a membership to the Dropship Club and they didn't get one-on-one -on -one support. Two, they thought I should be offering one-on-one -on -one coaching. And three, they were upset because they followed the steps in the course and they didn't make money. All right, let's break this down. Firstly, we have always made it quite clear. If you purchase a membership to the Dropship Club, you do not get one-on-one -on -one support. Our course costs just $67 a month. For a dropshipping course, that is quite cheap. And I even do run a live Q&A session for members every month. If we were to offer one-on-one -on -one support, the cost would honestly have to be a lot more. Secondly, I'm gonna be honest, I found it hurtful that he said that I should be offering coaching. To suggest that I am ethically obligated to offer coaching, even if you are willing to pay me thousands of dollars an hour, is quite offensive. It is my time, it's my life, I'm not someone's puppet. And actually, something that a lot of people don't know is that I have a speech and hearing impairment. So even if I did coach, it would be quite stressful for me. So no. But perhaps the most frustrating part of this comment is that the author says they followed the steps outlined inside the Dropship Club perfectly and didn't make any money, yet freely admits that they only tested five products. 
That is despite the fact that inside the Dropship Club videos and on this channel, I very clearly state that you should be prepared to at minimum test 20 products. And I'm even extremely upfront with how much money you should set aside for this process. So no, no, they did not follow my instructions. Instead, surprise, surprise, they went into this thinking that they were looking for a business when actually what they were looking for was a magical money tree. Now you might find a winner in the first five items that you test, and if you do, that is awesome, but it is unusual. Please do not go into this expecting that to happen to you, and do not blame me if it doesn't. Question 12. Did you run a Facebook like campaign to your fan page? Before you run product ads on Facebook, it is a good idea to run a simple like campaign to your store's fan page. Why? Well, it's because of social proof. I mean, yes, every day people are buying from shoddy Facebook store fan pages that have just 12 likes, but they'd probably be making way more sales if they put a little bit more effort in. I feel so strongly about this that when I created my video, How to Start Dropshipping with Only $50, I included it as one of the steps. And when you've only got $50 to work with, every single dollar counts, and yet I still recommend setting aside 12% of that budget for a Facebook-like campaign. Question 13. Do you have trust words and emblems in your store? All of these individual things that we are doing to build trust with our customers, like adding lots of products to our store and running Facebook-like campaigns, it's unlikely that one of these things is individually going to make or break sales. But it's all about the collective power of doing so. By doing all of these things, we help to build trust with the customer. So if you haven't already, go ahead and add some trust words and emblems to your store. Say things like secure checkout with MasterCard and Visa. Or noting that products can be tracked with USPS. And yes, e-packet shipments can be tracked with USPS. These names, these brands, they have an enormous amount of trust associated with them. And by name dropping them and associating yourself with them on your store, a little bit of their trust rubs off onto you. Question 14, are your products being priced at $15 or less? It's been a little while since I talked about this. So quick question, what is the goal with our product ads? Impulse buy. That's right. And for an item to be an impulse purchase, it needs to be priced low enough that the potential customer doesn't think too much before purchasing it. And as a result, I find that most new dropshippers do struggle to sell items that are priced at $15 or higher as a front end product. And actually the truth is, is that the real sweet spot is $9.99 because there is a huge psychological barrier from going from one digit to two digit pricing. The reality is this, when consumers look at the discount number, they want to see it as a big number. But when they look at the price, they want to see it as a small number. And yes, you can successfully drop ship and sell items that are priced higher than this, but they require more advanced selling techniques and require you to build more trust with the potential customer. You are new. Make it as easy on yourself as possible. Stick to selling impulse items. Question 15, have you done a test purchase? And finally, before you start running product ads for your store, it is a good idea to do a test purchase first. I have actually run into people who didn't do this and they started running product ads and traffic was coming through and they weren't making any sales and they were so upset. What is happening? And when they realized that it wasn't their product ad or their images or their copy that was the problem, but simply that they hadn't set out their checkout process correctly, they were quite embarrassed. So there we go guys, this video did get a little bit emotional and personal at times, but I hope that it helped you anyway. And if you would like to watch more dropshipping videos, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted. And if you haven't already, click that little notification bell next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And if you would like even more dropshipping advice, then you should be sure to download our free ebook, How to Make $10,000 a Month Online with Dropshipping. You'll find a link on how to download this ebook in the video description below.